Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about front-end and when to write unit tests for front-end components. So let's get into it. So the question in question I got on one of my old videos, basically the question, I, there was a bit of confusion with one of my, for one of my subscribers when it comes to testing UI components, such as React components or what, well, it doesn't matter which ones really. It's, this is applicable to most of them. And I think this is a good question because there is this discussion whether or not you should have the same mindset when you're testing, testing front-end code as you are when you're testing back-end code. And you know that the general idea for, well, test-driven development and all this stuff is that, hey, you're, you're supposed to go for 100% wire, right? That's most likely what most of you are reading these days. However, the reality often is often very different when it comes to unit testing. It's one of them things that you say that you're going to do, you know you should do it, but you're not going to. Kind of like keeping your room clean at all times and making sure that you always brush your teeth right. But when it comes to front-end, I think it's a little bit different. And the reason why I think so is because the the front end is a different sort of entity from the back end in certain regards. So the way that I think about unit testing in front end is usually that I state that I think that you should always, always unit test the standard components. Now, what do I mean by that? Or at least shared components. So basically what I'm saying is that when you are working, usually you will have two categories of components on your pages. Now, the first category, which is the most common one, well, hopefully it's not going to be the most common one, but it's going to be components that you will see quite often are the one-off components. These are the components that aren't actually being reused anywhere else. They're usually the sort of thing such as a page component as an example. It's the actual container that holds the whole page that you're loading into the DOM, right? Now that is one type. The other type is the shared components or the standard components. Now these are ideally your priced possessions in front end. These are the things that you're trying to standardize. These are the things that you're trying to get reuse from. These are things such as buttons, dialogues, um, accordions, like all of these different components. It doesn't have to be that. It can be a panel, it can be a like a tool tip, and many, many, many things. Things that are going to be reused all across the application. And ideally, as I said, the, you want as many of these as possible because the more you can have of these, the quicker you are going to be able to iterate and develop. But these are also notoriously hard to create. And if anybody ever, ever, ever has said to you that it's easy to create standard components, I question that more than you can possibly imagine. This is fucking hard. It, it is hard, like hard, hard, hard. It is easy to create a component that simply gets reused once or twice, or a component that kind of fits this thing and you're in retrospective apply it in a few places but then you don't have any deviations to this thing or nobody feels the need to hack around it or make, make it their own and so forth and that is what the true standard component is supposed to be about it's supposed to fit the use cases that you find today but also tomorrow and in order for you to have confidence that this is going to happen, you're going to have to change it. There is no one out there who's going to be able to say that, all right, today I'm going to create a standard component and that component is going to stay the same for 10 years. It's not going to happen. So the only way for you to guarantee that that's going to happen is that you, know, you number one, make it a very good first implementation. You need to be really, really, really into making this a good component and find all the use cases you have. Now that is in and of itself going to be tricky. You're going to have to look at all the call sites and try to figure out how people are using it today and then standardize it. Now imagine that you do do this. So you have all these different call sites for say your button. How do you guarantee that the next time you need to change it, you don't have to go and regression test it because that's what you're going to have to do the first time. You're going to have to go and regression test it on every single page unless you can some in some way keep it identical to the way it is used in that specific position. So hopefully nobody has like added a little bit of padding here, a little bit of, mar a little bit of margin somewhere or something like that because if they have, you're going to have to fix it somehow. So 
That means that the best thing for you is to make this investment now, make it a really flexible, strong implementation, and then unit test it a lot. Because if you change it in the future, remember your unit test should be a representation of the expected behavior you have today, right now, right, right at this moment. Which means that if something breaks, you are confident in that you know what you cost, like what type of regression you cost. That means it's easier for you to figure out if you can, if when you update this component, if if it's going to continue working or if you're going to have to do a full regression test again. And that sort of confidence is completely, it's invaluable. You need it in order to create a really strong library of standard components. However, why, the reason why I don't feel it's as necessary to do this sort of thing for page components or one-off components is number one, because they're usually very, like they're very liquid. Like a page component is something that changes fairly often, which means that you're going to touch it quite often and you're going to expose, uh, you're going to look it over quite a few times. Now that is not a good, good reason as to why you want to, like, I'm not saying skip it, but when something is frequently changing, a lot of the tests that you have are simply asserting that something is working in the intended fashion at this moment in time. And most of the time you're going to just shift a test from one state to another without actually caught, catching something that is unintended. Usually the things that break on a bigger component is that you have some wrong input somewhere or something like that. And I think that TypeScript is a much more efficient way of solving that problem than unit testing. Another issue with testing UI components, with all, which is such as a page component or these one-off components, is that it, ideally they should be composed of your shared components. So if you have your shared components tested, the only thing that's really going to be something like the, the the bigger components are usually containers of more small of smaller components. So if they are tested, the only thing that you're going to have to unit test if you're going to do unit testing is the larger component. So you. You can, of course, test every component. It's just that I think that it's uh, it, when when you're talking about a larger component, unless it really is a good fit for a unit test, and which I rarely find, I find it's much more useful to use something like UI tests or end-to-end -end tests to assert the behavior of these components because that's the thing that is very important to have, in my opinion, when it comes to front-end development. Because you have a visual component to the thing that you're testing, it's important that, and there's a, like an interaction between a user and the code, a direct interaction. I think it is vital that you actually test the UI with something like Cypress or something of that nature. Selenium is also very popular, the Selenium web drivers. And that's something that can be caught in that fashion. You actually test your features as opposed to testing the components. So you may test that your dialogue is going to react in the correct way and be shown in the correct way as a unit test. But if you want to check if your amazing special offer feature is working, you're not going to try to try to do that in the page component. You're going to create an end-to-end -end test that actually tries to co co create this state. Because a lot of these more complicated one-off components are usually only shown or they're only really feasible to test if you create a very specific state that you pass it. You can of course use snapshot testing to do this as well where you're basically just add, it's not, it's testing and asserting the DOM at every step, but it's, in my opinion, a lot more time consuming and more, it's smoother to create an end-to-end -end test for this. This is just, you know, what I've found so far. So that's my general thought on when it comes to doing UI testing and doing unit testing. One thing that I will add is that and this is true regardless of if it's a shared component or if it's a one-off component, and that is that you shouldn't hide the logic of your component inside of the component. Because when I think of a unit test in front end, there's usually two parts to it. One part is that, oh, you have a state or something that switches, you click that checkbox, you need to assert that it is actually going to be clicked right. That is sure valuable to a point, but it's not the most important thing. But in other cases, you may have conditional rendering or you may have specific logic that operates on input data to the component. You may pass in some props and then the behavior is going to change depending on what you're actually doing. And a lot of people, especially in the render function, if we're talking React land, they will put like if conditions and mappings and like all these different logic pieces inside of the render function. 
so that, that the right thing is rendered out. What I argue is that you should, instead of doing that, you should move that logic into a function. And then you should unit test that function. You don't have to, I, I don't think it's all that efficient to test every click handler and every possible interaction that you can have on a component, as I said, unless it's a standard component, because it's much easier to catch, capture this sort of behavior with behavior-driven develop, development. But when it comes to pure raw logic, which is usually the case with the things that you want to do when you're conditionally rendering something, you should unit test these parts and they should exist in a function of some sort because it makes it a lot easier if you can avoid the whole, I'm going to have, if you can avoid having to test the entire component just to get that the logic that makes things fairly easy. So what I want you to take away from this is that at least me, when it comes to unit testing, sure, in a perfect world, you should write unit tests for every single component, but I've found that to not be all that efficient when you're work, working with UI components. You should definitely consider making unit tests for your standard components because these will have multiple use cases in different areas and their requirements will change over time without it being easy to do that change without basically fully regression testing all the call sites. And that's a big hassle, so take the time to really do that well. Apart from that, I think that the larger one-off components are easier to test with end-to-end -end testing or behavioral driven, develop, behavioral, behavior driven development and things of this nature. It is easier to capture these interactions between what usually is smaller standard components than it is to just test the bigger component and then pretty much retesting everything again. And finally, I think that you should unit test logic as much as possible to the greatest extent possible. Don't hide logic inside of a render function or something like that and leave that untested. Break it out into a function and test the function so that you get the correct output in your component. Have a great day.